Good morning, ladies and gents. How's that for a morning view? As promised, or as threatened, here is an update on my bike after a year of owning it. Not quite a year, 23rd of Feb will be a year. The bike is a Kawasaki Ninja 1000 ABS and it's a 2016 model. To save you from watching the whole video, it's a good bike and I'd recommend getting it. I thought I would just go over everything for one last time. Just let you know everything that I've done with the bike and what it's like to live with. Headlights, um, replace them with HID projector lamps, LEDs in here, got rid of my mirrors, put those mirrors on, very important sticker, tank bag, I put in a little USB charger down the bottom there, Vans and Hines, Urban Brawlers, and on the back, Moto Dynamic replacement tail light, so it's um, LED, same as the original, but it flashes and sequential blinkers, and tail tidy. And that's pretty much it, I haven't done too much else. The best bits about the bike are, it's a torquey motor, uh, you don't have to click through the gearbox for too much. It handles fairly well, probably not as good as a sport bike, a full on sport bike, but it's a sporty tourer. Really it's a sports bike with um, handlebar extensions. Would I buy it again? Yeah I would. If it's your only bike, depending on the kind of riding you do, but if you on the thing a fair bit and you're not just going around twisty mountain roads um, this would be the bike but if you do a lot of twisty mountain road stuff and commute and things like that that's probably the bike you want the things that I'd change on it the things that I haven't already changed I am considering the seat because this thing I thought it would get a bit softer <laughs> over a year and it is a little bit but man you get a sore ass after a couple of hours, but that's about it. I wouldn't mind the panniers for big trips. Just less stuff hanging off your back. Less likely it is to open and dump your shit across the road. Overall, it is a really good bike. I haven't had any dramas with it. Just under 17,000 Ks on it in the first year. If you're in the market for one of these bikes, the 2017 is probably a pretty good version of this bike because I think they've fixed the headlights and for me that was the big downfall riding it at night was was dangerous whereas now with these lights a little better still not fantastic but uh, I think a swap out of um, HIDs for LEDs might resolve that issue exhaust will have to get swapped out at some stage just to get that little bit extra power a flash tune K&N air filter or something like that and all I would do is probably bump the RPM up by another 500 RPM. So red lines at, at 11,000 RPM. 11 and a half would be good. You can hit 11,000 RPM in sixth. So they say. I wouldn't know. And that's about 267 Ks an hour. So they say. Because I wouldn't know. All, all the good things that have happened with this bike are all the good things that would happen with any bike. You know, so... The change in state, you know, I was a bit pissed off and grumpy before I got it. Um, I, I, that's my default program, pissed off and grumpy. <laughs> Definitely have chilled out a bit. Because I have this release, so I can just go and jump on this thing, go for a ride. Midlife crisis material, <laughs> hence the name. But I'm, I'm 46 years old. I rode bikes when I was younger, probably from, rode bikes from 20... 23 through to 30 odd I had about my fourth midlife crisis and thought well screw it I'm getting bike again and I just went and bought this I watched a few videos but I'd never ridden one of these and um, I just turned up at the shop and said I want that one and I rode away that afternoon basically without having ridden for a number of years 
So when I was a kid, or when I was younger, you would always see these guys my age now going, oh, I'm going to have a midlife crisis, so I'm going to go get myself a 1,000cc. And then two or three weeks later, they'd either throw it down the road or they'd take it back to the shop and say, right, oh, um, yeah, I'm, I'm too old for this shit. But that's not the case with this bike and, and not the case with any of these modern bikes because you can dumb them down so much. You can make it nice and docile and and easy to ride. So for the first month, while I was breaking it in basically, I um I just had it down on low power. So it's got a few electronic settings that you can mess around with. So traction control on and I had it on, you know, a fairly um, fairly intrusive mode and I had low power set. So for the first month I rode around like a pussy. But then went for a ride with one of my, one of my mates who was a bit of a, um, well, a bit more daring on the bikes than I was. Or am. And um, so I turned it up to full power and it's been there pretty much ever since. So um, traction control, I usually run around on one, but every now and then I'll turn it off. But I don't see the point because I don't ride it that hard that I would use the traction control anyway. But it's just a nice little safety net. So for you older guys who are thinking about getting any type of bike, pretty much all of them these days have those rider assists. So traction control, ABS and power management. So you can deliver as much as you want or as little as you want. So wind forward a year from when I first bought it. On to right now, and what do I think about the power? Well, like anyone who gets a motorbike, you could always use a little bit more. And uh, th this bike's no exception, and I don't think any bike's an exception. It wouldn't matter whether you had the H2R, I reckon you'd still be looking for a little bit more eventually. But the bike is really good, I have no intention of getting rid of it. A year on. And what do I think? I still think it's a great bike. I still love the look of it. I'm still in love. Still in that honeymoon period with the bike. It hasn't pissed me off yet. The big troubles I've had weren't bike, you know, weren't Kawasaki related. The uh, back tyre, I, I went over something. I don't know what it was. I couldn't see on the video or anything. But I, I flattened the tyre, punctured it, and got stranded for a little while. Now, having, having arrived at this point... I've considered whether I would have bought the bike again and obviously if it's a single bike definitely there's no other bike uh, in my view that you would get because it's it's a couple of bikes in one it's a tourer you can get around on and stay relatively comfortable and then it's a sports bike that you can keep up with your mates uh, ABS it works fairly well haven't really had to use it on the back end every now and then you sort of stomper a bit too much obviously the front end I wouldn't like to get so close that I'd have to use it brakes are quite good standard exhaust system is pretty crappy pretty restrictive and very quiet the Vans and Hines make it a tiny bit noisier um, but not as loud as you would think because of the big catalytic converter slash muffler it is fairly quiet uh, it's a four-cylinder 1043 cc displacement that really doesn't mean too much it's not a high revving motor it's a very linear power curve delivers power fairly low and you don't get that big end rush and i think the sport bike riders don't like them because there's not that big rush of of power up the top end it's just a steady deceptive acceleration nothing out of the ordinary there's no no little oh yes you need to replace this really expensive bit or you'll die kind of thing there's none of that the bike has been super reliable i just take it down to the guys and get it serviced at the local kawasaki dealer anyway we might jump on and just head off 
getting a little bit of rain popping through. But we should be right. So the instrument cluster, you've got all your um, your modes for your trip computer. So you've got number of Ks that I've done since I picked it up, or actually that's the bike, what the bike's done. So nearly 17,000 Ks. Also if you push the button, come on, there you go. Uh, well, that's just a trip computer that I haven't reset since I bought the bike. That's another one that I reset every time I fuel up. Um, liters per 100 Ks, instant. That's the average that I'm getting, so that's 6.1 liters per 100 Ks. So as you can see, it's not the most fuel efficient machine on the planet. But I guess for a, a bike that can drink fuel, it's not so bad. Oh god. And range, and that's that's the mode I run in. It I guess the most I've gotten out of a, a tank, which is 19 litre tank, the most I've gotten out of it is 250 something Ks. And when I refueled I put about 17 litres in it. So you'd get close to 300. Every now and then the trip computer thinks you might be able to get about 400, but I wouldn't trust it. And then the other button here is the reset button if you hold it in for any of those modes. And um, if you just click through it, it's time or temperature. And I'll usually leave it on the temp, just watch the bike and make sure she's okay. Now, for your different modes, you've got a select button here on the handle, so you can go through that stuff here as well, if you see. Radio, and same with the bottom one. Radio, so now you've got your full power and traction control. So you hold it in, and then she goes. So you can push whether you want high or low, or full or low. Press it again, and it switches to the other mode, so you can flick through off or full on but I generally run like I said with it on the least intrusive ABS mode um, off is obviously less intrusive but you know what I mean well ladies and gents here I am I couldn't oh I got water running down my back I couldn't stay off the bike even though it's raining I, I thought I'll just duck out I've got to duck into work for a sec so I could have taken the car but I thought no nah, it doesn't look like it's that wet okay you go you go you go cheers mate cheers bro <laughs> Oh, fuck. <laughs> the non-friendly time. 